The following video was made possible by EA Game Changers. Hi everyone and welcome to another speed build. Today I'm sharing my first build that I made in Sulani, which is the new world that will be coming with the Island Living Expansion Pack, which will be out this Friday the 21st. I was given an early access code, which is why I'm able to share this video with you all today. But ever since this pack was announced, I've just been so excited to get my hands on it and start building in this world because it is absolutely stunning. And when the leaks first came out that the next expansion pack was going to be some kind of tropical paradise one, I wasn't really sure how I felt about it because I had been hoping that university would be the next expansion pack and I was just thinking, you know, watch all these things you would think would come with a pack like this, not come with it. You know, I was thinking, you know, they might not include lounge shares, watch them watch you not have the ability to build on lots that are already slowed, but when I saw the official images and the trailer, I saw that this pack came with pretty much everything I wanted a pack of this type to come with. Like we have sunburns and the ability to get suntans, and right now I'm building on a lot that slopes into the water and is on a stilted foundation. And by the way, the stilted foundation did come with a patch that went out yesterday, so you don't need to have Island Living in order to have a stilted foundation, which is really cool because you could definitely use this foundation in other worlds like Selva Dorada or Windenburg or Brindleton Bay. Like there's just so many other places that these found that this foundation would really be useful for. The unfortunate thing about these beach lots are that the terrain tools are or the terrain manipulation tools are locked for them. So you can't alter the terrain at all, which is a little bit of a bummer, but that kind of makes sense because you have to have a certain, like, um, I believe I heard that you have to, like, they had to design it so there was a certain kind of slope as you go into the water for Sims to be able to get into it. So if you want making all of these hills, then the ability to walk into the water just wouldn't work anymore. So that is understandable. And I am just really glad that we finally have lots that aren't completely flat to build on. So I'm definitely going to be doing more builds here in Sulani than this one. And this one is kind of like, I was trying to make something that has sort of a rundown shack type feel. And this is a build that I'm gonna be using in my Island Living Let's Play, which should be starting this weekend. And we're going to be playing with two young adults in this series. So I wanted to have a house that wasn't really the nicest because they're not at a point in their life where they're established and have a ton of money yet. So. I wanted them to have a house that reflects it. So I reflects that. So I ended up using a lot of cheaper items in this house. And as I said, I was trying to give it this sort of slightly rundown kind of a feel. And I am just really excited to start the series because it looks like there's a lot of really cool gameplay that comes with the pack. And with the series, I wanted to also have a little bit more of a chill and laid back backstory because in the past I've had backstories that were kind of dramatic where you're sort of in the middle of some sort of drama when the series is starting. But with this one, I wanted the backstory to be more of just a starting point. And then it's completely an open book where the story will, will unfold from there. So I don't really have much an idea of where things are gonna go. We're not kind of in the, we're not really in the middle of any sort of drama, but I'm sure there'll be things that come up. It's just with this series, I really wanted the story to completely naturally develop based off of what happens. I just felt like that would really go with the laid back island vibe of this world. And there will of course still be a backstory, you know, it's not gonna just be like, I plop these Sims down here and there's not really a reason why they're there. Um, but yeah, it's just, just not really going to be a super dramatic backstory. It's just a happier one, which, I'm actually really looking forward to it because sometimes it's just kind of nice to play the game in a way that's more chilled and to just kind of kind of go with the flow and see what happens. And the Sims that we're going to be playing with are named Carrie and Talia and one of them is going to be an island native and then the other one is going to be a newcomer who moved to the island for, you know, just to kind of get some inspiration, just to kind of break out of their normal life. So it's not really like the most original backstory, but... I'm just still really looking forward to it and I thought it'd be fun to have the perspective of someone who is an island native and knows a little bit more about the customs and traditions and then to also have someone who's new and is kind of discovering everything for the first time. So I think that'll be a really cool dynamic and there are going to be roommates who don't really know each other super well. So I think it'll be really cool to see them get to know each other and kind of see how their friendship develops and 
where things progress from there. And Talia, who is the native, can introduce Carrie to all of her friends and can help her to become more accustomed to the island. So I'm just, I think that's gonna be really fun. And I'm also going to incorporate some of the townies into their friend group, like some of the young adult townies. So that'll be really nice as well. Cause I know one of the townie households was a, I forget what her name was, but it was a girl who came to the island and then ended up falling in love with another Sim. Um, so I was kind of thinking it'd be cool for Carrie to become friends with that girl since she kind of had the same experience with her. So there's just stuff like that that I think will be really fun. And I also want to say that I really love the plants that came in this pack because there's just all of this really, just these really lush plants. And I've been wanting plants like this in this game. Like that lush grass would work so well in Salvadorada. And I actually tried, like before this pack came out, I was trying to make a build in Salvadorada because I really wanted to get another speed build up between, you know, the last one I uploaded and this one, but I just, I had a little bit of a builder's block. Like I could just not build this past week. And I think part of that was because I saw all the stuff that was coming with Isle Living. And whenever I went into build, I just really wanted to use that stuff. So then I just wasn't really happy with anything I was making. And then I went to build something in Salvadorada thinking that that would fulfill my desire to build something tropical. But then I was just sitting there thinking, you know, still foundations would be great this house or that lush grass would be perfect for this house or those windows would look great at this house. So I just decided to take a break from building for a bit and wait till I got this pack to build again. I just had a blast making this build and using all the new items. It's always really exciting when you have a bunch of new stuff to build with and I can't wait to put this build to use when I start my Island Living Let's Play, which hopefully will be up this Saturday, possibly Friday, but more likely Saturday because I don't want to rush things and I still have a bit of prep left to do. But I did actually get a lot of setup done because even though I didn't upload much this past week, I was spending time doing as much setup as I could ahead of time. So I already have The Sims made. I've already done 75% of the intro machinima because I didn't end up needing Island Living for most of it. So I just have to get a few finishing shots for it and touch a few things up and then that'll be done. And I just have to record the part and get it going. So yeah, I'm just really looking forward to that. But between now and when I upload the first part of my Let's Play, I will be uploading another speed build because I was asked to be a part of a world building collab because Sam, whose channel name is Harry here on YouTube, arranged this whole Sulani world building collab. So basically there are 16 of us in it. 14 of us are going to be building one new lot each for Sulani and then a couple of people are gonna be making new households to go with all of the residential lots. So it's just gonna be this whole redoing of Sulani and I'm just really excited to be a part of the club. So for my build for that, I'm going to make something that is a little bit nicer than this one because, you know, as I said on this one, we've got the worn looking, you know, this one looks a little bit more run down because we've got the worn wood siding and then the worn corrugated metal roofing. So I'm gonna use some of the nicer wallpapers and roofing on that build just so it's something a little different. And my build for that collab is going to be on one of the lots in the nicer private island part of the world. So I just felt like I should go with something a little nicer and less shack-like than this build because I am making this one in the main part of town, which isn't quite as nice as that other area. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to being able to use some of the items that I didn't get a chance to use in this build. But right now I'm on the living room. I've got a good bit of the way done. I was trying to make it feel very cluttered um, because there are two, you know, I was trying to make it feel kind of cluttered and mismatched because there are two young adults living here. So I was just kind of imagining that they pieced together what they could. And I just really love how this whole room looks. And I also sized up those skateboards that came with Parenthood to make it look like surfboards. I just thought that was kind of a cool decoration for this room. And I just really love a lot of the items that came with this pack, like these couches and chairs are really cool. I am kind of disappointed that there isn't a matching love seat. Cause it is a bit of a bummer when you have like cou like a three seater couch and chair that match and then you don't have a love seat to complete complete the patch or complete the why am I speaking wrong? You know, you don't you don't have a love seat to complete the set. There is a bench, but it doesn't perfectly 
fit in with that. And then this dining table and chair set is also really nice. And there was a shelf over in the living room that I put a bunch of decorations on that is really cool as well. So I had a lot of fun just arranging a bunch of different stuff on it. And these curtains are also really cool as well. Like just so much of the stuff is just really beautiful. Like these four tile wide sliding doors. I have the one here off the dining room and then I stuck another one off of the kitchen. They are just absolutely gorgeous. And I'm glad we now have some floor to ceiling sliding doors. And I also want to mention in case anyone is wondering that I'm not going to be doing a create a sim and build and buy overview for this pack. I know a few of you like the way that I do them, but I just decided to not do it this time because as I discussed in the past, the way I do my overviews is it's just very time consuming and tedious and they take 10 to 12 or more hours to make and there's already a lot of overviews out there from the people who went to Sims or not Sims camp, um, EA play. And then I'm sure as soon as embargo lifts, there's going to be a ton more people making overviews. So I just decided to not do it this time and focus on what I was really looking forward to doing the most, which is building because I just want to do what makes me happy this time because the overviews, they're not really my favorite kind of video to make because I'm just sitting there for hours and hours taking literally thousands of screenshots and then editing them all together. And it's just super time consuming. And I just wanted to not be as stressed out with this pack release. And I just wanted to actually have fun. Plus I also took the day off work today and I just, you know, I don't want to take time off work and use my PTO only to do something that, that just ends up stressing me out. And I end up not enjoying a ton. So yeah, I, I just decided to not bother with that this time. So I hope you all understand that. I'm not sure if I'm going to do overviews for future expansion packs. Honestly, I don't know. I had to figure that out, but this time I just really wasn't in a mood to do that. Um, so hopefully that is fine. I mean, you can get a, you can get a decent look at the new build and buy, buy objects from this video. I know it's not a thorough look at it, but again, I just really wanted to have fun. And I feel like more people are interested in seeing a speed build than an overview anyway. But currently I am furnishing this outdoor area back here, which is just really cool. I love how there's this whole deck back here, just looking out over the lagoon. It's just a really a beautiful view. And this part of the world doesn't have quite, like it's, it's definitely a stunning view, but it's not quite as stunning as the views you get in the other parts of the world that look out more so to the ocean, which I guess is kind of why this is a cheaper part of the world, but we also do have lounge chairs. So I had to stick a few of those out here. I was just so happy when I saw that we got lounge chairs with this pack because I've been wanting, like I've said numerous times in speed builds that I really want lounge chairs and I'm just get kind of annoyed with having to overlap seats and ottomans, trying to make fake lounge chairs. So I'm just really happy that we have actual ones in the game that Sims can lounge on properly so they can just sit up there and they can sunbathe. And then I also added these floaties into the water here. And then I also stuck a beach like beach towel on this area in here. So there's just lots of different spots where Sims can lay out here and catch some rays. I didn't stick the canoe or aqua sled. I think they call it an aqua sled. Um, I usually refer to it as a jet ski, but I didn't stick those on the slot because I was trying to make something that's a little bit cheaper. And I feel like that's something that, you know, they're, they're kind of expensive. Like I think the outrigger canoes were a couple thousand simoleons. I forget how much the aqua sled was. I think it was more than that. So I was trying to keep things like a little bit cheaper. So I just decided to stick only the floaties there. And once we get a little bit further into the series and they save some more money up, we can always buy a canoe or a rock with sled for them. So that'll be more of a future thing. Um, yeah, but even though I was trying to not make this build super expensive, it still ended up being around 60,000 simoleons. But that's just because I, you know, even though this is for two young adults, like I just really wanted to feel fur furnished and lived in. I just didn't want to feel sparse as it would if I just made a starter build. So yeah, that's just why I just didn't really pay attention to the cost and just kind of stuck stuff down. But currently we are furnishing Carrie's bedroom, who is the Sim who is new to Sulani. And even though her, this room is furnished in mostly stuff that came with Island Living, I was trying to add a few things to it that felt like they were things that she brought with her here. Uh, Cause in the machinima, 
she does have this, like she was living in San Mashuna before she moved out here. So there, I do show her apartment in the machinima. So I try to take a few decorations from that and stick it in here. Like I have those twinkle lights hanging from the windows there in that apartment. There's also that poster I put on the other wall that's from Parenthood that was in that apartment as well. So it's just little things because I was imagining that she sold a lot of her big furniture and a lot of her possessions before moving here because Sulani, like it would make sense that Sulani is pretty far away from San Marchuno. So it would just be easier to sell stuff like your bed and your couch and tables and things like that and just kind of start fresh and rebuy the stuff in the new location. Um, so yeah, that's why a lot of the bigger furniture is stuff that fits in with the theme. But then I do have those few things that are smaller that I imagine she brought with her. And I do really like how Room came out with that orange, or not orange, <laughs> mix it on my colors here, with that yellow and red color scheme because I just love that swatch of that rug with the red flowers on it. But right now I'm furnishing the landing area upstairs. I wasn't really sure what to do with it. Yeah, landing areas are one of my least favorite areas to furnish because I just never know what to do with them. So I always end up just sticking a bookshelf and some kind of seat in it and that's sort of it. Um, but we do have that dog toy bin there because these Sims are going to have a dog. So the dog is Talia's dog that she had. So Carrie, Carrie is going to be getting to know her dog as well because I just thought it'd be really nice to just have Talia have a dog. Like I just saw her being this adventurous Sim who had a dog who was always by her side going on adventures with her. So yeah, that'll be really cute. And Plus, I do believe dogs can swim in the ocean as well. So I thought it'd be kind of nice to be able to see how her dog interacts with the water in this series. And I did give her a cute Australian cattle dog. I just thought that'd be a good kind of dog for her because they tend to be very smart and high energy. So yeah, I, I just thought that that was a really good kind of dog for her. Uh, right now I'm furnishing the bathroom. There's not really a whole lot to it. I was trying to give the bathroom sort of a shabby feel like there's just a few different kind of colors in here and things don't really match perfectly and we got some cheaper plumbing in here like i used this um i have this sink from parenthood in here currently but i did take that out and replace it with a sink from laundry day stuff i just felt like that fit the feel of this house very well and i was trying to figure out what kind of mirror to use and like what kind you know trying to find one that coordinated and this one worked pretty well so for the toilet i did hear that some of the base game toilets got new swatches that match some of the stuff that came with Island Living because we didn't actually get a new toilet with Island Living. Um, and I was trying to find like which toilet it was that had that swatch, but I couldn't figure it out. Um, I think it might have been one of the more expensive ones. I'm not completely sure, but I just stuck a cheaper one anyway because I remembered that I was trying to keep this place looking a little on the cheaper side. And then we just have that worn cabinet above the toilet that came with Paranoid, which I thought fit in really well. So right now we are on the last room of the house, which is Talia's room. And I was trying to make this room feel fairly colorful. And then I just stuck this rug from, uh, what was it, backyard stuff in here? Cause there weren't really, cause I really want to use this swatch of this bed. And then I didn't really, like there weren't real, there weren't really any swatches of that other rug that I hadn't used yet that went with this bed. But I do really like how the bright blue on this rug goes with the bright blue that's on the bed. Like it almost perfectly matches and just goes together so well. And I just gave Talia this bedroom because I feel like it's the nicer one of the two. I mean, they're the same size, so that's not really the issue. But this one is up on the second floor. It's a little bit more private and secluded. And since Talia was here first, she obviously like had picked this room already. So yeah, I th I th that just kind of worked out well in my head. And this house has kind of a weird layout. Like there's only one bathroom and it's upstairs rather than on the first floor. That's just because I was trying to figure out the layout. I wanted to have the bathroom down there, but there just wasn't really a good spot for it. And I had a little bit of trouble like getting, to, you know, like starting on a build that I actually liked. Like I had a few scrapped attempts where I was trying to have everything be only one level, but I just, it just didn't look quite right. And once I got started on this two story house, it just looked a whole lot better. So it did end up bigger than I meant for it to end up, but I just think it looks so much better than my attempts where I made a one story house. Cause do the lot size, it just, it didn't really fit in quite right. I just realized that I maybe should use the fan that came with Island Living a little bit more on the inside, but that's fine. I'll just use that more in the inside of the house that I built for 
the World Save collab. I just really liked how these lanterns looked in the house. But we're almost done with furnishing Talia's room. I'm just adding a few finishing touches, like adding more of these vases here to the, the shelf. I just, I really like these little vase decorations. Like it's just kind of cool to size them down and use them different places. But the last thing I'm doing for this house is changing the roof to be a green color. And I also got rid of those flowers I put on the front of the house because I just realized the blue roof was a little too dull. So I want to do something to add a bit more color to, color to this house. But that's about it for the building part of the video. So as usual, there will be a link to download in the description. There'll be other stuff in there, how to find it in game. And that's from y'all from me. So if you enjoyed the rest of the video.